Yeah. Walter, uh, good morning. It's uh, cold and foggy down here, but uh, I know it's not as cold as it, it is up there. Hey, listen, I decided to start a little video this morning. Uh, as you know, per my email, I decided to give up making a square hole with um, with the shaper. So I just don't think it's it's possible, but it's uh, more trouble than it's worth, I think. So anyway, I've decided to um, take that old clapper and I put a big old vise, big old large vise on the on the uh, tag and the slot in the middle the guide slot in the middle of the vise is big enough to drop the clapper right down into all the way to the table so I can get a pretty good bite on it and the hole in the end of the clapper is 516 so I took a piece of uh, 516 steel HSS and uh, I dropped it into the hole to align it and uh, clamped it up there so now I'm going to I'm going to be starting and stopping this video because um, I, I don't want it to be a long video but what I'm going to do is um, is uh, develop a little software um, on CamBam to just make a square hole and what I'm going to do is overcut the corners um, that way I won't have to do any filing because it's a it's a bottomless I mean it's a situation where there's kind of a bottom in there so it's pretty hard to, to file out the corners um, what I'm gonna do to begin with I may spoil this piece um, it, that that may be but I, I I gotta go down in there about an inch so an inch is kind of a long ways for a little small end mill so I'm kind of hesitant to use an eighth inch end mill that's what I would normally use and I may eventually you know give that a try but the um, the eighth inch end mills I have you know the, the flute distance is about a half an inch or something that's not much so <clears throat> I have some 3 16 end mills that that are a little heftier so the corner cutouts will be a little bit large but but maybe that'll be fine you know I don't know um, I'm going to give that a try and the flute distance on those is about three quarters so I've got to go down in there past the the distance of the flutes but that may be okay too um, it, it's about it's just a little over three quarters to the to the uh, spring hole that's that's in the clapper so it, that, that may work out okay anyway I'm gonna give that a try this morning so I've got it lined up now so I'm going to turn the camera off for a second and I'm going to put the uh, I'm going to load the software up into the computer and I'm going to um, uh, get the 316 tool bit in there and, and get it zeroed out on the surface so I'll come back in a few minutes okay Walter I'm back and um, it's going I don't know how it's going to come out. The, the, the tool bit looks a little bit large, you know, considering it's taking out the corner. But a square tool bit will go in there and it'll be held solid, so maybe that's okay. I may try this with an 8 inch tool bit later on. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. And also, I'll zoom in on the. Let me. Um, first of all, let me move it up to the monitor. I have to loosen a couple things here on the camera. So there's the monitor. So that's what the profile looks like. And it's gonna make it's gonna cut that profile one inch deep. So it looks like the z-axis is down. This probably this whole thing's gonna only gonna take about ten minutes. We're already down a quarter of an inch, so we only got to go an inch. So <laughs> it's only been a, a couple minutes uh, since I started. So it's moving down pretty fast. It, it's zipping around there pretty quick. Okay, let me get back to the let me get back to the the actual cut. 
If I can find it here. I don't even know where I'm at. There it is. I can't, probably I can't zoom in as very, very much. Hey, there I am, zoomed in. Looks like I need to, you know, put some air on it. Let me, uh, let me start the compressor. See if I can get a little air going on it. Blow some of those chips away. chips out of the way. There's not much left after it makes that corner cut, so but I'm I'm pretty sure that'll hold the tool bit in there. An eighth an inch tool an eighth of an inch end mill would be perfect. But as you see, you can probably see there let me uh, I don't, I'm not sure uh, it's kind of in a shadow but if I put the light on it I, it might be worse. Let me see if I can put the light on it. Me, I'll turn the view around so I can see it here. Well, doesn't make much difference. So. Get one of my. I put a high intensity flashlight on it. Let's see. That don't help much either. Helps a little bit. But you can see there that there's not much left after it makes that corner cut. So I kind of knew that was going to happen. But I have to try something, and I don't want to chance an 8-inch inch, eight inch end mill right now. If this works, then I might I might try an eighth of an inch end mill on something else. But uh, we'll give this one a try. I'm down almost a half an inch already, so I'm halfway there. So this. I, I've been running this program for six minutes. I'm looking at some monitor right now. So, looks like it's 12 minutes, 12 or 13 minutes, it's gonna finish. I'm running the spindle at 1500 RPM, and I'm, I'm, running a, I'm running just a feed rate of six. So, probably could go more, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not in any big hurry here. I, I figure it's gonna be pretty quick. I don't know whether the, we'll see if the tool bit fits in there sloppily or what, you know, I don't know. This sure beats the heck out of trying to do it. Now this is, the, the flutes aren't long enough to make the cut, so, but maybe that won't matter too much. I don't like the idea that, that the spindle, that the, you know, the, the area above the flutes is rubbing in the, in the pocket, but we'll see. Might be okay. You know, to, to write this up in Cam Bam is like five minutes, right? All you got to do is draw a square and do a profile and tell it to cut the corners out. That's it. Automatically generate the G code, so that's pretty simple. I, I like, I, I'm, I really like the square tool bit. I do not, I'm not keen on the, the round one. The, you have to fool around with them too much. Once you're trying to square one, it goes back in there the same every time, except for it's the height of it, so it's really the best way to go. 
I see some some of the old hand shavers just have round tool bits, but um, I mean we have the we have the CNC, don't we? So that that's probably the solution, and probably an eighth inch tool bit would work just fine. I used the 3 16th inch tool bit before when I made the the pocket for the hole in the top of the ram on the shaper. So I already know that I don't remember how deep that was, that that hole, but uh, I remember that worked just fine. So I thought, well, I pretty I was pretty sure this would work. So if it was like a so it's only a 5 16 square, so it's not very big, actually. If it was a bigger square, this would work just fine. And uh, I'm not wasting any cuts. I just use a profile in Cam Bam, so it just goes around the square. I already knew it was going to the center's already taken out by the drill, so um, the no-brainer here. Only takes a few minutes to cut it, and it actually goes actually one inch goes down into the to the spring hole on the clapper. It goes down in there about halfway. Now this on this clapper, the the tool bit is actually located further back. So I I'm pretty sure it's pretty much aligned with the pivot. So probably at this point, at this point, it's, it's, it's the hole's all, all the way through to the to the spring hole, and it's just taking out a little bit at the back of the spring hole right now. That's it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna peek at this thing and see what it looks like here. I might be I might get in your way. Looks all right. Maybe if I don't video, maybe I'll I'll get a chance to uh, without making this video too long. Maybe I'll get it out of here and try a square tool bit in it. Even if I have to do a little filing, it won't be much. It'll just be a little bit dinky bit on all four sides. We're down, we're down, so we, we don't have far to go, actually. I'm, I'm plunging in, um, I'm plunging in 10,000, so that I'm not going down very much. Each pass is only 10,000, so you got to make a few passes, right, to get down and in. It's been going for 11 minutes and 44 seconds, 45 seconds, almost 12 minutes now. We're down 0 0.9150, so, you know, not far to go. All I did, I didn't do, I didn't really spend a bunch of time on setup. All I did was use a, use a machinist square and stick the vise on there and and uh, clamp it down and and line that thing up with a with a piece of with a piece of uh, round stock. Turn this around. Uh, I can't get in the camera. I don't know where I am. Can't see. There's, there's a piece of round stock, but it's not. It, it won't focus on it. But anyway, I think you know what I did. Anyway, I keep sticking my arm in front of the camera. Okay, we're almost down an inch. I think one more pass. There it is. Okay, let's, uh, let's zoom out a little bit, I guess. 
I can still stick in my arm in front of the camera, you know. Not that's not too good. <laughs> Alright, I'm zoomed out. Let me shut the shut off, shut the air off. Okay, let's move the Z axis up out of the way a little bit. Well, I guess not. Why is that? Okay. Well, alright, I give up. There we go. Maybe this keyboard sitting out here in the dust and dirt isn't helping things. All right, let me uh, let me take this out of here. Okay, so there it is. Let me let me see if I can see it in the viewer here. So that's what it looks like. Let's see what it, let me look, down inside it looks okay. I can see down in there. It didn't go quite to the spring slot, but maybe it's about a 32nd of an inch from the spring slot. I know you can't see it, but so that's what it looks like. So let me see if a piece of steel will fit in there. Let me go get a piece. Oh, beautiful, perfect. Well, let's see here. A little bit. Uh, well, there it is. There's a piece of tool steel slides right in there, slicker and slicker and a whistle. Well, that's perfect. A little bit rockety, rockety. Let me get. Let me get a. Let me get one of the, let me get a set screw or something to stick in there and see if that tightens up okay. Well, oh, got to find the right size screw here. Don't know what happened to it now. There it is. Oh yeah. Do I? I don't know what happened to my Allen wrench, but um, okay, there we go. All right, so oh yeah, tightens right up in there, no problem. It doesn't move a, it doesn't move a iota. That works perfect. I'm happy with that. I think if I use an eighth inch. If I could use an eighth inch end mill, the three sixteenths inch, three sixteenths inch end mill didn't work perfect all the way. Let me see if it goes all the way at the bottom of the slot, because oh yeah, goes all the way at the bottom of the slot. You can see it in there, so that's perfect. Um, actually. Actually, the slot could go beyond that point, I guess. The only thing is, is trying to get down in there that far with an end mill. I don't want to break an end mill trying to get down in there too far. But there's now I can put a square tool bit in this clapper. So I'm happy with that. Okay, I'll call up now. Um, and uh, so you can see. So there's there's how we need to make a square hole. I, I think that's the, that's the solution, and I'm pretty sure after using the three sixteenths inch uh, end mill that that an eighth an inch uh, eighth of an inch will work. And maybe I can probably buy an eighth of an inch end mill that's got a longer flute on it. It's just that all the ones I have here are short. So, um, but actually, maybe the the way to do it is just use the three sixteenths. I don't see anything wrong with that actually. I think that's going to work out just fine too. So maybe maybe the idea of trying to make a nice a neater hole with smaller corner cutouts is is a waste of time. Maybe that's the solution. Anyway, that's uh that's that. So the heck with making a square hole with a shaper. Uh, I'm going to shut it off now and and uh, I'll post this video or maybe I'll stick it up on the Dropbox.